Okay, so this is your Oracle VM Manager guest VM. And Oracle, v Oracle VM Manager does not install on bare metal hardware. It needs an operating system, uh, namely the Oracle or Red Hat or Linux family of operating systems. So we, so we, so we went through the process of installing Oracle Enterprise Linux or Oracle Unbreakable Linux 5.5, 64-bit. And let's go ahead and check the status. So we have our Oracle VM Manager up and running. So that was your Oracle VM Manager. And we have two Oracle VM server machines that are basically sitting on bare metal hardware that were installed on bare metal hardware, which in this case, it's not exactly hardware. It's basically guest VMs. So this is the first of the two Oracle VM server or hypervisors. And so your Oracle VM agent is up and running. Okay, great. So <clears throat> let's log into your. So this was a little bit of a, an overview of your machines that you, that are basically that represent your Oracle VM architecture. I'm clearing my browser cache because that can be an issue sometimes. So here I am to your Oracle VM Manager. As you can see, it's a web-based UI. And I'm logging in as a super administrator. And we've logged in. Let's go to, let's talk a little bit about servers and server pools. So we have two servers. Oracle VM servers. Uh, within an Oracle VM server pool, you need to have at least one server pool master and utility server. Now, there's three types of three three types of there's three classifications of these servers: utility server, server pool master, and your Oracle VM server, which is your actual hypervisor. The server pool master basically acts as your, as a communication point uh, and a dispatcher to the Oracle VM agents in the, for the, with, to the other servers in the Oracle VM server pool. Your utility server is basically responsible for the creation, migration, removal, and so on and so forth. Um, in your VM server is basically your Zen-based server, the actual uh, daemon for the hypervisor itself. So we have one VM server. Both of them are VM servers, are acting as hypervisors. And one of them it has the responsibilities of a server pool master as well as the utility server. Both of these servers are logically grouped together into the server pool name. All of which, uh, all of what I'm describing right now, we already went through the exercise in last week's session and how to set up a server pool. Uh, and I'm just summarizing it for you right now. So. so as you can see over here, the high availability, uh, let me shift the focus to that screen. So as you can see here, um, 
your server pool is called HA. Uh, that's high. I had it prefixed by HA, which stands for hypervisor. I'm sorry, high availability enabled VM server pool. Okay, and the WIP address is set over there. So it's the it's a HA enabled Oracle VM server pool. So once your server pool is up and running, the next step of the process is importing or creation of your various resources. Okay. Now let's go and talk, before I talk a little bit about the resources, I want to talk a little bit about the OVS repository, the directory structure within the OVS repository. Okay, here I am uh, remoting into SS, uh, using SSH uh, using PuTTY, which is a free open source tool, into the one of the Oracle VM servers, and I'm going into the Oracle VM repository, which is a shared repository. Now, how was I able to accomplish a shared repository without physical, without a physical SAN or a NAS or NFS or any physical shared device? I was able to use, do that using Oracle VM virtual boxes shared VDI uh, facility, which is a recent addition, uh, a recent feature that they just added. Uh, it's been there for quite a while with VMware Server, which is uh, Oracle VM virtual box main competitor. Uh, and they recently introduced this facility, uh, uh, this feature. So here I am into a shared uh, repository that's shared between the two different servers that I just showed you. And let's go over the directory structure. Now, as you can see, we have these five directories. Okay, the ISO pool, the published pool, the seed pool, the shared disk, and the running pool. And I want to talk a little bit about these directories because they're important in the overall scheme of things. The seed pool is basically it basically contains all contains all your guest VM templates. So anytime you create a template, it's going to reside within the seed pool, unless you manually get rid of it or delete it within Oracle VM Manager. It is going to sit in the seed pool. The shared desk directory houses all your shared uh, virtual disk files uh, that can be shared amongst the different VM, guest VMs, or DOM uses they're called. The running pool has all your guest VMs or your DOM use uh, within it. The published pool contains all your guest VMs, which are basically deployed as public. And finally, the ISO pool has all your ISO files or juice images uh, that are used by Oracle VM Manager. So this is a little little bit of a summary. You can read more about these directories uh, uh, in the Oracle VM uh, 2.2, which is the latest and greatest version that we're using today. And all of this, all of all of the above that I just mentioned, you can read about them in detail in the Oracle VM documentation. So, okay. So let's go back to our Oracle VM management console. So after we created, after we have our Oracle VM servers up and running, we've installed them, configured them, we've logically grouped them into server pools within Oracle VM Manager. The next step of the process is to create, import, and configure your different resources, four different type of resources, the ones that I just mentioned, 
that correlate to the OVS repository directory structure are the VM templates, the images or the or copies of your guest VMs, the ISO files that are used for installation of your OS kernels, and your shared virtual disks. So here I already went through the process of importing a template. The guest VM today that we're going to get up and running uh, as part of this exercise is a Oracle Enterprise Linux 64-bit x86 small template, which basically is like a 4 GB partition, so it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. And as you can see, I've already went through the process of importing it, and it's up. It's available for us. The status is active. So it's available for us to create our guest VMs, which is going to be our next step. But let me quickly show you how easy the whole process is of importing your templates and making them available for use. So we have three options that we can, again, I mentioned these three methodologies that we can use. Uh, these are part of the three methodologies that we can use to create these templates. We can specify an HTTP or FTP source. We can discover from our server pool, which is uh, the seed pool subdirectory within the OVS directory that I just showed you. And we can use the P2V or the physical to virtual tool or utility to import a physical machine into our Oracle VM infrastructure. So here I am selecting select from server pool, clicking next here. <coughs> I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to specify my server pool that I just showed you and my template. There's no template available right now because the only template that I imported or copied to the seed pool directory is already part there, part of our available and active templates. So but I just want to quickly show you how easy it is. So I'm going to go back and show you the imported template that's available up and running for use. So again this is an Oracle Unbreakable Linux release 5 x86 64 bit. The memory size of this template, which we can change or configure afterwards as part of our creation slash configuration of our DOM U or guest VM, is one gig. The two guest VMs that I have, uh, the two Oracle VM servers that are basically guest VMs within Oracle VM virtual box have two gig of memory each. And the Oracle VM manager guest VM within Oracle VM virtual box has five gig, uh, one gig. So I'm t I'm using a total of five gig of physical memory in my Windows-based laptop to get this uh, infrastructure up and going. So I can create a virtual machine. I'm going to go through these steps. I'm not going to actually create it because I've already created this virtual machine. Uh, but let's go through the steps of creating a virtual machine within Oracle VM. So I click here on this button. It gives me three options. Create from a virtual machine template. Create from installation media, which, is your, which are your ISO images. Or from a Pixie boot network. So it gives us these three options. So I'm going to select based on virtual machine template. I'm going to select my server pool. The policy for preferred server is auto or manual. Uh, in the manual, I can actually specify which server out of the two servers uh, I want this guest VM to reside on, preferably. Or I can set it auto, which where it will automatically detect the server with the lowest resources being used at that point in time and allocate it allocate this guest VM or run this guest VM on that server. I'm going to select my template, which is your Oracle Enterprise Linux base kernel 